So um, I just want to tell you a little bit of my story. Um, I, uh, I was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. My brother died when I was four. Uh, my parents were divorced. My caretakers, who were my grandparents, died when I was 11 and then 12. Uh, I grew up feeling very lonely, unloved, unimportant, not safe at all. I couldn't trust adults or anybody around me and that anybody I loved would leave me. I craved attention. I became promiscuous. And there were suicide attempts. And uh, that gave me a little attention, so some, some more follow. The promiscuity uh, led to led to abortions. I was petrified also at that time that I would ever pass on to any child anything that was done to me. I have a heart for children that grow up feeling so unloved and unwanted. Um, and then I became really angry. I was brought up in a Christian faith, uh, but that ended when my grandparents died. Um, I became very angry. I was mostly angry at God. The God I knew was very judgmental, conditional, uh, and I could never do enough to make anything right that I did wrong. He would never forgive me. I would probably go to hell forever and burn for the choices that I made. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> when I got very angry, I was, uh, it started in school. I would, uh, I was moved around a lot. My parents were pretty unstable on my mom. It was an unstable environment, and uh, every year it was a different school, a new town. I was always a new kid, and I was picked on. Uh, I didn't have a lot growing up. Uh, I got sent to a lot of psychologists and people that told me there was something wrong with me. Um, I was a, uh, I was high risk. <laughs> no one ever expected me to live this long. I'm 46. That in itself is a miracle. <laughs> so uh, I grew up feeling that uh, I, as long, I had shut myself down emotionally to deal with everything that had happened. I wanted to be like a robot. I thought, you know, God really messed up when he gave us emotions. And uh, so I had shut down emotionally and that I learned that uh, in order to make it on the world that I could depend on nobody but myself. I was about 14 when I decided that. I left home when I was 15, and everybody was all right with that. And uh, I discovered how to make a lot of money, both illegally and immorally. And with that money, I could buy anything I wanted. And at, what was most important to me was I didn't have to ask anybody for anything, and I didn't have to need or want anything. I continued on that path of chasing money. That was all that mattered to me. And I remember I bought my house at 24 and it was only a couple years later when I was sitting in it and it was Christmas time and I had a real pretty tree and a real pretty house. And I didn't have anybody to spend it with. I had shut people out emotionally and chasing after all that money left me lonelier than I ever felt. Um, at that point, I really felt confused and lost in life because I thought that was it. You know, that was the only thing I didn't really, there were lots of things I didn't have growing up, but I thought money would solve everything. And uh, it, 
when I, I just remember looking around and there was nobody to share it with. I didn't have a friend that I felt I could trust. Uh, I didn't, I estranged myself from my family and had been for a long time. I started giving to charities. I thought that that would make me feel better. And, uh, but nothing ever filled, nothing could ever take away the sadness and the loneliness that I felt. I tried all different things to fill that, to feel fulfilled in my life. Uh, I used to move everywhere all the time. I've been, I've lived in a lot of different parts of the country. I've tried every other religion. Um, and I even got involved with the occult at one point. I was, uh, I was, so I had all this money, I was incredibly lonely, and at times throughout my life, I had done drugs. Um, I was introduced to it at about 12, but I liked money more, so I never really got caught up in that in the beginning. And then uh, at 26, after sitting in that house, I, um, I went to go find friends. My money bought me a lot of friends. Um, so the friends that I found, uh, I gave them pretty much everything I had materially, and when I had nothing left to give, they also took from me emotionally. Um, they told me all the things that I wanted to hear, that they liked me and they were my friends. And uh, so that was a trap in itself. And I finally got tired of fighting trying to keep up this front that if I had everything around me that could make me appear to have it all together, that I was all right. Because inside, I was so messed up. I got tired of fighting, I gave into the drugs. The money didn't mean anything anymore. It gave me no reason to keep fighting. <clears throat> so at 26, I uh, went to do drugs every day. It, uh, it was a relief and I started going to jail. The only identity I felt that I had left was my name. And when you get incarcerated, they even strip you of that. You're no longer a human being or a person, you're a number. Um, but I felt I was right where I belonged. I felt like this is what my life has come to because I'm such a horrible, terrible person. Jail was the hardest thing that I ever had to go through, but it was also the best thing. I was so, first off, I got crazy uh, from being stuck in a small cell. So they, the only things they offered were any meetings in church. I didn't, wasn't crazy about either of those ideas, but I wanted to get out. That's how I was introduced to uh, to Jesus. And I said the sinner's prayer for the first time with my roommate over a game of cards that we were betting Frito chips for. I believe God has spared me my whole life through the things that I've been through and the situations I've put myself in to be here right now. And that's why I say if you're here right now, you're not here by accident. Since I took that sinner's prayer, God has never stopped pursuing me. A year ago, I moved back to Florida, and uh, I was familiar with restoration, but Ashley Wilhite tricked me into going to a softball game that she said <laughs> with, was with her peeps. She didn't say who. Uh, that was a great game. I cussed in front of Angie. I tried to hold back in front of the children. They never said they were from the church. And they invited me back, you know, I was trying to kind of be cool, put up that front like, hey, you know, I'm all right. And uh, they still invited me back. And I was mortified when I went to the church on Tuesday night and they were all the same people. And I was like, oh, and I had to go back. I'm like, what did I say? I hope I didn't, you know, it's when you start trying to process, think about everything that you said. And uh, so, uh, <clears throat> When I came back, I went to restoration and um, 
I felt comfortable. They would. They had actually moved into a smaller building than I first met them in, and they were so kind and loving. And I thought, for sure, these people must do some drugs on the side. They're gonna, you know, they're into something. It's they're just they. They have the best fun. You know, I didn't have a high opinion of Christians because. Uh, I either met these people that would like literally pursue me, grab me, throw me down and try to pray over me, or um, or they were just like, oh, we just love you. And I'm like, you people don't even know me. But uh, I certainly didn't love myself, but the people at Restoration never gave up on me. And uh, I really started buying into it. You know, I'm like, I've tried everything. Jesus has been after me. I see that. Like he, I actually heard his voice for the first time. I was, I wasn't reading the Bible, but I was going to some classes and and doing things that I could, but mostly just staying close to the church. Um, I found myself doing things that were completely unheard of. Uh, let me say this: what what changed my whole attitude about it was I was in Massachusetts for five years. I had uh, fallen back into doing a lot of drugs for those five years. And I had uh, about a $200 a day heroin habit and about a $100 a day cocaine habit. And I was really sick. Um, The police took my boyfriend away who supplied my drugs. And I was petrified to think about what I was going to go through. And I I planned to kill myself because I just didn't didn't think I would make it. so I started asking God to forgive me for all the things, the horrible things I had done in my life. And, uh, you know, I, and I started off saying, God, if, if there's even a God, and there's a heaven and a hell, please forgive me because I feel like I've walked hell on earth and I can't imagine spending eternity there if there is one. And if there's a heaven, please forgive me and let me in. I woke up the next day when I should have been sick and I wasn't. Ashley called me on the phone and prayed for me, and the, the only part of her prayer I remember hearing was, uh, let the, any attacks the Satan tries to use against you, let you see the truth in it. And all of a sudden, things like, you know, in the Bible it says the scales were removed from your eyes, it's like everything becomes so clear. And I was like, this only has to be God. There's no medical reason, there's no other reason that God just removed all the drugs from my system. I was, I completely packed up my apartment in the following five days when I should have been on my deathbed and, uh, and moved to Florida in my pregnant cat. <laughs> I took her with me. And so uh, that was what opened my eyes. I'm like, okay, maybe there's a God and he really does care about me. And so that's how I, when I came back to restoration and I saw everybody and they were so kind to me. And, and I would tell them little things here and they're like, I've been in jail and they didn't freak out. And I was a drug addict and they didn't you know, have a private meeting and decide not to let me back in the doors. And uh, they didn't hide their purses. <laughs> they let me associate with their children. You know, all the, the horrible things that, that, uh, just, that I thought I didn't deserve and they just loved me I mean I never I've never known unconditional love and I had no example of Jesus to follow and um, you know in the beginning of this movie it talks about that I didn't become a Christian because of the church I became a Christian because of the people who were the church and that is exactly what restoration did for me I'm not saying there is another churches that can't do the same thing but I was ready at that time, and they were there and available, and just poured love onto me. The only problem I had is they would tell me they loved me all the time. And I used to tell them they were crazy. <laughs> I told them they were weirdos. <laughs> um, and I didn't, I just didn't feel, they told me great things about me, and I just said, I don't see it. I don't get it. I don't, you know, Jesus, why would he have a plan for me? Why would he care about me? I mean, okay, yeah, maybe he forgives me. I really hope he does. But uh, I didn't feel that inside. And uh, somebody, Melissa, had uh, got me to go to the encounter with her, which Ashley had asked me to three years ago, and I ran out crying at Saturday lunch. When everybody broke for lunch, I broke for home. 
and uh, it was not, I, I don't know what happened. Anyhow, this encounter was the most amazing thing, and I won't give you any details, but if anybody ever has a chance to go on one, when the time is right and you're ready, God will provide the encounter for you, and it will completely change your life. I actually, uh, this week, I was on the encounter last weekend. I was high two weekends ago. God again has just opened my mind, set me straight on that path. He has never stopped chasing me. He loves me so much. I couldn't say that before. And I can't stop crying because I'm just so amazed how much I mean to him. My, my family from the church has shown me that. Jesus has shown me that. That's why I say if you're here, you're not here by accident. He's pursuing you. Because I look back and all the places I was at was not by accident either. It's all leading up to this and for the great things that are to come. Yeah!